Alright guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to gear up your boosted characters extremely fast in the pre-patch, ready to jump into the dark portal. It looks like the gear for boosted characters is going to be pretty bad apart from the relics and the trinkets, so it's definitely worthwhile in the pre-patch spending as much time as you can upgrading that gear to make the leveling experience in TPC much faster. So first of all, I've picked out gear that's very fast to farm, for instance, gear that you can get very quickly from quest rewards, therefore there's no RNG, PvP rewards which just require farming, then stuff you can buy off the auction house, so there's a few extra pieces that you can get because of jewel crafting, and then some early bosses that you can farm in dungeons and not bosses that are like right at the end of a dungeon. By the way guys, I still can't believe that only 19.9% .9 of the people who actually watch my videos are subscribed to the channel, so please give me a quick sub if you really want to help out. But anyway, let's jump into the video. So first of all, I want to talk about the PvP gear, but I don't want to spend too long talking about this because I think most people already know about it. And I think it's more important to focus the video on the pieces that you can get from PvP gear, such as trinkets, rings, necklaces, belts, and cloaks. I'll tell you how I'm going to structure the video. So I'll go through every single slot, slot by slot, and give you a good option for a caster DPS, and also a melee DPS or a hunter. So in a pre-patch you can farm PvP gear with honor points and marks of honor from particular battlegrounds. I put up the full cost on the screen right now. So honestly guys, this is the best way to spend your time because the PvP gear is so good. It's basically equivalent to tier 2.5 gear, has lots of spell power, attack power, and then lots of stamina too to make you beefy. And then some of the items also have cheeky little bit of a hit chance which is great when you're taking on mobs at a higher level. My general advice is to prioritize getting the weapons first because they're basically equal power to AQ40 loot. But anyway, let's move on to the item pieces that you cannot get from PvP. So first of all, I want to talk about trinkets because I think it's important to get powerful trinkets. The trinkets that the booster characters get are quite nice, but I definitely think that these ones from this particular quest are going to be more powerful. So first of all, we have Power of the High Chief which increases your spell damage and healing by 30 points, so that's basically an extra Briarwood Reed, and you can get Briarwood Reed with this as well for an extra, well, 58 spell power, which is totally ridiculous. And then the same quest actually gives the same kind of trinket, but attack power instead. And you get this item from the quest, Words of the High Chief. I quickly want to talk about the Daimol Book trinkets, because I think the Warlock one, and the Shaman one and the Hunter one are definitely worth getting, but I think the others you can definitely ignore because the one you get with your booster character is probably better. Another good option is the Rune of a Guard Captain, doesn't take very long to get this at all, and this is very good because of that hit chance, so great for any melee DPS. And then you obviously also got Briarwood Reed, but again that does take quite a while to farm. However, it is important to mind while you're farming this one, you will also get a Shadow Damage Wand, which was totally terrible in classic but it gets upgraded to be one percent spell hit as well so it's kind of a very efficient farm if you think about it but only if you are farming that particular boss now let's move on to necklaces so for mages and warlocks and shadow priests the go-to option is definitely the sapphire pendant of winter night you can very easily craft this with 280 jewel crafting skills so i imagine a lot of people are probably going to power level jewel crafting and then start putting these on the auction house or you can just ask someone to craft it for you. The only really good melee DPS option I can really find is the Ember Fury Talisman because of that hit chance and the crit chance and obviously the cheeky little bit of strength and um, obviously it's a very early boss and it does drop quite frequently. You can also go for the Living Emerald Pendant if you are a shaman or a balance druid if you're leveling in those specs because you will get 12 spell damage from this item, even though it's a mainly a healing item. But honestly, when it comes to necklaces, you don't have many good options. It's probably just better to pick something up in Outland or just keep what the booster character has. Now we're going to talk about cloaks. Now I am including some PvP gear here, even though I said I didn't. And the reason for that is while you're farming your marks and your honor points, you know, for the PvP gear, you're probably simultaneously going to generate a lot of rep in Altar Valley or some coach in Arafi Basin, and you probably will be able to pick up stuff like the Stormpike Sage's Cloak, which is a spell power cloak, and it's very good. And then for melee DPS and Hunters, you have basically the equivalent item, same reputation requirement, the Soldier's Cloak instead. You can also farm the Amplifying Cloak if you're a spellcaster from one of the bosses in Diamol, the Magister Calendris. So let's talk about risk gear. I have the Funeral Cuffs that will 
drop from one of the first bosses of Lower Black Rock Spire. So it's very quick to farm and it does provide 12 spell power. The issue with the boosted gear, as far as I know, it doesn't have spell power on it. So you really do want to be stacking spell power because it just helps you kill mobs faster. And we also have shadow, sorry, slash claw braces. Same dungeon, drop, drop some halicon and increases your hit chance. Again, very valuable stat for leveling. Hunters and warriors and paladins will have access to a much faster option because they can just buy the beast stalker's bindings, which has 20 attack power on the wrist, which is very naughty. But normally this is always on the auction house very cheap because it drops from like Scholomance and Stratform and Low Black Rock Spire and everything like that. So let's quickly talk about rings. For spellcasters, I have the Band of Unicorn. Reason why I put this up is because you can very quickly buy this from the auction house. It's normally fairly cheap and it's always on the auction house. However, it might be a little bit more difficult because people will want this item so much. But then again, because so many people are leveling in the pre-patch, then it will probably be dropping more. So it will be in circulation. Honestly, there aren't many good ring options that you can get very quickly. But this is, and this is basically the only quick one you can get. Here's a fast option for any melee DPS. They can very quickly get the Onslaught ring, which you just get from level 280 jewel crafting. And if you farm enough rep with Warsong Gulch, you can just go for the Legionnaire's Band or the Protector's Band if you're Alliance, which has fairly decent stats on its strength and agility. And if you have a time to farm something, you can go for the Flaming Band, which drops from Pyrewood Embassier in Blackrock Spire. Now for Wands, I want to quickly mention the Serpent Tine Sculler because I mentioned it earlier it does increase your spell hit by 1% so that is very very powerful if you're going to take on high level mobs which is actually my plan and obviously this drops from Jed. So here is a quest called the future task right and both spellcasters and Mel DPS can take advantage of this one because one of the rewards is the Scrying Wand, which is 11 spell damage on your wand. And then you also have the Thorium Flight Blade, which is 12 attack power and 6 crit. So that's very nice. And this quest doesn't take too long. You just have to do an Orderman run and then unlock the Platinum Discs at the end of it. And just do a little quest chain at the end of that. It's obviously a guaranteed chance for you to get these items because it is a quest reward. Priests also have a very quick option. They can just do the Sunken Temple class quest. This did not take me very long. And... Yeah, you get 12 shadow damage on your wand. You can also go for Rip Hook, which is 22 attack power on your bow, and that's very quickly farmed from Shadow Hunter. And if you go a little bit further down and kill Warmaster, again, he drops a throwing weapon, which basically has fairly equal stats to this one. And then they just get it really lucky. They have an even faster option. They just have to win one out of Valley because they can get this wand that increases their frost damage by 16 points. Now, when it comes to belts, the Highlander's Cloth Girdle and the Chain Girdle and the Plate Girdle are definitely best in slot because, yeah, they just have amazing stats on them. So if you farm so much Ar Arafi Basin while you're getting your PvP gear that you also are honoured with Arafi Basin, then you can just pick up these items very quickly. Here's a quick example of the male version and obviously the plate gear version of this belt. They are very nice. Alternatively, you can go for the Alteric Valley Waste Rewards. You may be more likely to be able to farm the rep up in time because rep from Alteric Valley does farm faster. So you've got a Storm Pikes Plate Girdle, you've got a Mail Girdle, Level 1, and a Cloth one with some cheeky spell power on it. And then you've also got a Necklace that I forgot to mention, 18 attack power, and then that one, yeah, don't even bother with that one. So I'm going to finish the video talking about the gear pieces that I've managed to get on my new level 60 character. Obviously this is not a booster character so I've had a little bit of extra time but I've only had two weeks so it may be worth going for some of these pieces too. Because a lot of the gear I've got, I have actually got from raids. It may be worth doing some Zulg Rub, some AQ20, maybe some Molten Core to try and pick up some de half decent pieces. For instance I've got these Shackles of Young Scarred which you can very easily get from the last boss of AQ20. And then I've got Belt of Untapped Power, that's 29 spell power. I've also got these legs, the Bluntinge Kilt. I've also got these foot wraps, they just dropped from something in Strathorn, it's 27 spell power. And then I've also got the Band of Force Concentration that I did manage to grab from Blackwing Lair. And apart from this, I've also got a random green item which literally adds 41 shadow spell damage to my gear. It may be worth picking up a few cheeky spell power greens like this, or full on strength or agility greens to fill in the gear pieces here and there if it's better than your booster character's gear. You could also go out of your way to do the princess surprise quest. It's a fairly long chain but it won't take you that long. I think you just have to kill the last boss of BRD. I have actually done it. I just have the quest item 
in my bank and I'm sorry my bank and I'm waiting to turn this in for TBC for DXP but if you look at a reward you get 18 spell damage on your ring and then for the Melo DPS 1% crit and 6 strength so that's not too bad either. But anyway guys that is definitely going to be the end of the video there. My name is Medigoblin until my next video. Ciao.